What's going on guys? Welcome to part two of getting started as a web developer. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about JavaScript functions and how you can use functions to enhance what your website can do. So previously we had a website which just used the basics of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Today we're going to talk about what a function is. So a function is essentially a piece of code that we write once and we can execute it as many times as we want. Now this can be useful for a number of reasons. Today we're actually going to create a counter app. So it's going to have a counter in the middle of the screen and we're going to have an increment, decrement and a reset button and we're going to achieve that by using JavaScript functions. So without further ado guys, let's jump straight in. Hope you enjoy this and if you do, smash the thumbs up button. Let's go. So starting from where we left off, we had a website which had some HTML, some CSS and some JavaScript. So remember when we clicked this button, it said, wow, you clicked me. So what we actually want to do in this case is first we want to introduce two buttons which would say increment and decrement and these will be responsible for incrementing and decrementing our counter. So let's just get the layout of things correct first. So we're going to remove this button. Um, we are going to introduce two new buttons. So the first button is going to say increment and I'm going to copy this line again and the second one is going to say decrement. So now if we save and we refresh, we have increment decrement. And now they don't do anything because clearly we haven't hooked it up to anything. So we're going to go over to our script.js and because we're no longer using this old function, we're going to get rid of that. So the code's already a bit cleaner. So let's go back to our index.html and let's actually give the website a little bit more meaning. So we're going to say this is my counter website. And here in H2, what we're going to say is this is where the counter will go. So if we refresh, so this essentially is a good starting point. So we have our H1, which is our header, and it says this is my counter website. And the H2, basically, this is going to be the place in which we'll get replaced with the counter value. So when we click increment, we expect this to go up. So it'll be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And when we click decrement, we want to go down. So how do we do that? We can use a JavaScript function. So if we go into script.js, so let's think about our problem. We need a counter which initially would start naturally at zero. Now to do that, we can actually use something in coding called a variable. A variable is essentially some memory on the computer which stores some information. So in this case, we have two types of variables in JavaScript. We have a let variable and a const variable. Now a const variable is similar to what it sounds like, it's a constant. So if we don't want the value to change once we set it, we use a const variable. But in this case, we want our counter to change. We want it to become 0, 1, 2, 3 and vice versa backwards. So in this case, the way we do it is we write let the name of the variable. So in this case, we're going to call our variable count and we're going to give it a starting value of zero. So that is the syntax for our first variable. And this is going to be the one which stores the counter value. Um, every time we refresh the web page, this value will get reset to zero. So the JavaScript file will run from top to bottom each time we refresh. So let's save that file. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a function which is going to be responsible for when I click the increment button. So what we do is we say function increment count and we simply have an open close bracket and some curly braces. So what we want to do here is we want to increment our count. So to, to do that all we have to do is simply write count equals count plus one. So it's basically saying, let's reassign the value of count and we say get the current value. So currently it would be zero plus one. So every time we click it, it's going to go up. So it's going to say one, two, three, four, vice versa. However, what we have now is a problem of, okay, so we've changed the count value, but how do I actually get this part of the web page to change? So there's a handy little feature in JavaScript where we can access the document, so the web page itself. And the way we do that is we use something called, so we write document and then we do dot to access all the properties and functions of the document. 
um, we do that and we say we can see the top one is get element by ID, get element by class name and so forth. But the one we're interested in is that top one. So get element by ID. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to, by using an ID, go into our web page, find the element that we want to change or change the text of or manipulate and do things to that element. So in this case, we're going to do that, get element by ID. We're going to open the brackets and here you can see we need to give it a string that specifies the ID value. So in here, we're going to give it, we're going to say, go and find the element with an ID of counter. But in this case, if we go back to our index.html, nothing here currently uses an ID and we haven't actually talked about what an ID is. So we have two types of selectors in, um, in web development. We have an ID and we have a class. So these are the two main types of selectors. An ID simply is something which targets one element. So think of a person when you have an ID, typically everyone has their own unique ID. So whenever you want to use an ID, you're using it to target one thing. If you use it to target, target multiple things, you should be using a class instead. So a class is in fact that it means that if you have more than one element that you want to target, you would give it a class and you would give that class a certain name such as button, like adjustment buttons or something like that. But we'll go into that in further detail now. So for the H2 element, in order to identify it, I'm actually going to give this an ID of counter. So we're going to say this has an ID of counter and then we're going to save and we're going to go back to our script.js. And now look, you can see document.getElementById counter. So it's going to go into our index.html. It's going to find this element. And at this point, we now have the element. So we're going to do dot. And you can see we've got a number of, again, different functions that were available to us. But the one property we're interested in here is inner text. So what inner text is essentially doing is it's saying go to this. So this whole line of code is saying document.getElementById counter. So we're getting this whole line essentially then dot inner text is basically targeting this middle inner text so what we can do now is a very clever little trick we can say set the inner text so equal to the count and if we save that and we hook our button up to the increment function because remember if we don't do that then nothing's actually going to happen so increment count and that has to be spelled exactly as we've spelled it here so the function name so if we save that and we refresh so when i click this it should essentially replace this with the count value so if i click it there we go it's working just like we want it to so we need the same to happen for decrement so how do we do that we go to script we can simply copy this function and we can rename it to decrement so decrement, and instead we can do minus one. And the same principle will apply. Once we've done that change, we want the document to go get the element by the counter, which is essentially this element here. We want to set the inner text to the latest count variable. So you can see this count is essentially storing our counter value, and then we're just updating it and we're refreshing the document as we go along. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back to my index.html. I'm going to change my on click now to be decrement count and the open close brackets are how we call a function without these open close brackets the function actually doesn't get called so it won't actually invoke so some of you may run into that problem just make sure when you have the on click you actually include the brackets so let's refresh and now we can see we've got an increment we've got a decrement perfect so it works so it even goes into the minus numbers which is great now i want a third button which allows us to reset the counter so I'm going to have a reset counter and I need to make this function. So if we go here and I say function reset counter, or let's just call it reset count and let's change this to reset count to keep things consistent. And this is basically going to say the count becomes zero and then I want the same principle to apply. So there we have it. So now if I press, oops, and we have to change this to reset. We don't want it to say decrement. Okay, so now if I click increment, decrement, and I click reset, it returns to zero. So that's perfect. So that's exactly what we want. At this point, there is, a, however, an additional step. So 
It works as we want, however, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good code. So in this case, what I want to show you is that we can actually pass something called a parameter to a function to enhance its capability. So in this case, we have two very similar functions. We have increment counter and decrement counter. They both essentially do the same thing. So it would be better to have these inside of one function. So instead, I'm going to introduce a function and I'm going to call this one adjust count. And this adjust count is going to take an amount. So we can pass any sort of number we want to it and then use it inside of the function. So inside of the curly braces, I'm going to say count is going to be equal to count plus whatever amount that we give it. And then what I'm going to do is the same thing here. So I'm going to say set the document. So go inside the document, get the element by the counter, set the inner text to that new count uh, value. And what we'll find here is that if I now link these buttons, not, not to the previous methods, but to the new adjust count and this one also adjust count. And we can see that it takes a parameter here called amount. So we actually have to pass it a parameter when we invoke it. So here I'm going to pass one for increment and minus one for decrement. So now when I refresh my web page, you can see it still works. But instead, this time we're using one function and we're reusing it for different purposes. That means I can get rid of these two functions. So you can see we have less code, but it's more powerful and it's doing the same functionality. So this essentially is a refactoring step. So we got to where we wanted to get to and then we basically saw there was an opportunity to introduce a parameter and basically get rid of two functions and combine them into one. So there we have it. We have the basics of using functions in JavaScript. But before we're done, let's quickly make this look a little bit better. So we're going to go into our style.css and as a little hack, I'm going to say everything inside of the body, I want to do text align center. And if we refresh, now you should see everything goes into the center of the web page. Now, what I want to do here is I only want to style the increment and decrement buttons to be a nice big button, which is green. And I want the reset button to be a big button, which is red. Now, the way we previously learned is that we could do something like this. And then padding is a property which adds some space inside of the element. So if I was to give this 50 pixels padding, then look what happens. All of the buttons get 50 pixels padding. Okay, that's kind of what we want. But now if I change the background color, all three are going to change. So we need a way to essentially say, I only want to target some elements, but not all of them. So we previously spoke about classes. And in this case, what we can do is we can actually use classes. So for the increment and decrement button, I'm going to use a class and I'm going to call it the adjust button. So anything with this adjust button class is going to get some particular style. So I'm going to give the increment and decrement button, the adjust button class. I'm going to go to my style and I'm going to get rid of this generic selector and I'm going to say select all the classes. So the dot in CSS resembles a class and we're going to say adjust button. So this means that for all of the elements with the class adjust button, apply the following styles. So I'm going to say for all the buttons with the adjust button um, class, apply padding of 50 pixels. Let's change the background color to green. And let's change the color of the text to white. And if we refresh, now you can see it's only changed the ones with the class. So that's quite cool. Finally, we can do the same thing with a class on the reset button, but just to demonstrate that you can also use an ID, um, I'm going to target this one with an ID of reset button. And I'm also going to style while I'm at it, the ID counter here. So the header attribute. So I'm not going to say all of the header elements. I'm only going to target the one with uh, an ID of counter. So the way we do that is we go into style.css and first I want to style this one here. So the counter number. And to do that, anything which has an ID, we use a hashtag. So we say hashtag counter. So any element with the ID counter, which so it should be only finding one element if we've done this correct. I'm going to say change the font size to be, let's say 60 pixels. So we want it to be pretty big. Save and refresh. And there you go. And now if we increment, decrement, you can see it's a much nicer looking app. 
And then we also had the reset button, which had an ID. So if I go to here and I write hashtag reset button, and then I want to give this one a padding of let's say 60 pixels. So I want it to be a little bit bigger. I want to say a background color of red. And I want to say the color of the text to be black. And we refresh. There you go. So we've got an increment, an increment, and a nice big reset button. One last thing to know is that whenever we do change this value, notice how when I refresh, count no longer exists, it seems, or count no longer has the value which it retained when we were pressing these buttons. That's because it's non-persistent. So there are techniques to keep that number even after a refresh, but we will learn that at a future date. But for now, that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, the last step, of course, is that when we refresh, it's not really nice to say this is where the counter will go. So to fix that, we're just going to go over here to our HTML and say, initially start with a value of zero. So in that case, it will look like this. So initially is actually a string value of zero. And then if we go to our JavaScript, when we increment, it will get updated and then it will change the value of the count variable and then update the document to display that change. So there we have it, guys. We have our first functional web page. I hope that was useful and demonstrated the benefits of using a function, how we can write functions in a better manner. There are plenty more things to learn about functions in JavaScript and web development in general. However, I hope these tutorials have been quite simple and sort of getting you into grips of how we can build things and how we can slowly combine the different concepts from HTML, CSS and JavaScript together into producing a website that we want to build. So if you found this useful, smash the thumbs up button. And if you want, consider subscribing if you like the videos and they find them helpful. Stay tuned guys. Until next time. Peace. Bitch, I came up and I don't know. I don't know where I go tomorrow. Bitch, I came up.